welcome to you don't know because you may think you know but you don't know on this episode we're talking about the last unicorn circa 1982. Um, first of all I talked to Jeff about this and he has never heard of this movie. <laughs> and I talked to people at work about this and they've never heard of this movie too. And I really thought, I was like, this is some like crazy fever dream I had as a child. I'm like, this is like a really good movie. And now yeah. I, can, I can, can appreciate all the famous people like, like Mia Farrow, uh, Jeff Bridges, uh, Angela Lansbury. It's like, like all these like famous people. I'm like, this is like a big movie. And also the theme song was so effing good too, where it's like, how can you never have heard of this? Um, so, um, and that maybe our viewers out there haven't heard of it either. So I will walk you through The Last Unicorn um, and we'll see how well you remember. Um, okay, so we start off with like uh, this intro of these two guys riding horses, uh, looking to go hunting. And then one of the guys says, you're not gonna find anything to hunt here. This, uni- uh, this forest is protected by a unicorn. And then we're like, okay, well, let's, let's get the heck out of here then. Um, and then before he leaves, he's like, be wary uh, because you were the last of your kind. So stay safe and, and, uh, and be wary. And then the unicorn's like, are you tripping? Like, I'm not the last unicorn. There has to be, there has to be like more. I can't be the last. Um, and, <laughs> and then comes the great theme song, which is like, and it does like this weird tapestry, like kind of like Baroque kind of painting things that are like, like unicorns and lions and stuff. America, the last unicorn. But at the end of my show, I will play you a sample of the group coverage version of it, which is like this really heavy <laughs> hero dance kind of version, which uh, is a bit obnoxious, but also really good. So we'll play that at the end of the, the, the podcast. Um, so then it goes back and then there's like this weird butterfly that is like, and like saying like, uh, that he's traveled all over the world. And then the unicorn's like, well, if you travel all over the world, like, do, do you know if there's any other unicorns? And then this long song and dance, he start, he's like start singing some weird song, which doesn't make sense. And like, I was like, like, I don't understand what's happening. But then he's like, oh, the Red Bull came and rounded up all the unicorns and there's no unicorns left. And they went to Tiger's castle in the north. And then it's like, okay, um, I'm gonna go. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go find my, my, my people and stuff. So uh, next is, uh, <laughs> She's like, she's walking through the forest to try to find this like red bull or this castle. And then uh, she falls asleep on the side of the road. And then some guy on a, like, on a carriage is like, uh, uh, oh, it's, oh, wait, okay, you know what, I need to back up. First of all, no one can know it's the last unicorn. No one, sorry, no one can see, very few people, sorry, very few people can see a unicorn. Most people, when they look at a unicorn, all they see is a white horse. Um, so anyway, she's, uh, she's sleeping on the side of the road. And then some guy comes up saying like, oh, what a beautiful white horse. I'm going to capture it and, and make it my own. And then she gets really offended, like a white mare, how dare you? I'm, a, I'm an effing unicorn. And kind of, and like, like, like bounces off. And then like uh, the guy's left kind of dumbfounded, but whatever. Girl doesn't learn her effing lesson because <laughs> that scene, she's sleeping again on the, the side of the road. Um, like <laughs> if you're looking at the picture, she's like, literally the road is here. And then she's on the side of the road. And it's like, okay, you could have, I get that you need to sleep, but like, couldn't you have just like found somewhere else? And listen, I know we're in a post Me Too movement. A girl was asking for it. You know what I mean? It's like, if you didn't want to get captured, maybe don't sleep on the side of the road. And also don't play the innocent victim too, when you know full well that just last night, the same thing happened. So um, that. <laughs> <laughs> it's controversial, I know, but we're gonna say it anyway. But like, she was, she was asking for it. Uh, so, but this time she gets more than she bargains for because it's not some lonesome farmer that finds her. It's a, a witch. Um, I heard her name is Madam Something. Uh, look it up. Uh, so, uh, so she she captures her, saying like, oh, I need to, like like she sees that's a real unicorn. It's like, oh, I need to capture this unicorn. Um, and, uh, and, and, and with her is one of her like uh, helpers and then uh, a, a, magis- a magician who's uh, a bit like a young magician who's not quite into his magic, but he also not- recognizes that it's a unicorn but kind of plays dumb. Um, and then you find out that, the oh, Madame Fort Fortuna, Fortuna, that's her name. Um, so then you find out that she runs like kind of like a freak show or like a car, like a traveling carnival where she has like uh, griffins and, and uh, 
uh, manticores and like all these mythical creatures in cages. Um, but it turns out that they're just illusions. Like they're like a lion that's made to look like a griffin and uh, a monkey that's made to look like a giant ape and and, st- and so on. It's just illusions that she's doing magic for to trick people. Um, but then, uh, but then magician's like, okay, I need to break this unicorn out. So goes to the unicorn, like, I will use my magic and get you out of this cage and break you free. Uh, does a spell, nothing happens. Does another spell, all of a sudden the cage starts shrinking and it's like about like, like, like crush the unicorn. And then uh, the unicorn, he's like, oh, my magic's no good. And then the, the unicorn's like, keep trying, I need to get the heck out of here. And he's like, oh, well, I do have these keys. And it's like, are you kidding me? So you have these keys all along and then you're just like trying like, like show off and stuff. So it's like, whatever. Um, and there's another weird scene where they're like this traveling thing, like traveling group of bandits and stuff. It's really weird singing and stuff and, and terrible. Um, but we do meet Molly, who's one of the people there, and she sees the unicorn. And the three of them decide to continue on to uh, to, to Hagrid's castle to find the Red Bull and find out what happened to all these unicorns. Um, and as they're getting closer, the Red Bull enters the, the scene and starts chasing the, the unicorn and the unicorn keeps trying to run, but the Red Bull's uh, going after her. So then uh, she, uh, so then uh, the wizard, oh yeah, the wizard's name some weird name, like, like Shum, Shum Dick or Shum Duck or whatever. I don't know what it is, some weird name. Um, but uh, turns her into a human girl. And honestly, if you want to talk about Me Too moment, this was a Me Too moment where Molly's like, how effing dare you white man changed this unicorn into something that she's not and it was like so offended that she would turn this mortal creature into a human girl or woman rather and uh it was like very actually a really good moment where she was just like who do you think you are like how dare you um so that is a good moment um fast forward we're in Hagrid's castle castle uh uh and and Hagrid Hagrid is like this old white man uh, who's like on the brink, like he looks like he's about to die, like he's like super old. Um, but then uh, he uh, he recognizes that that the girl isn't quite who she is. Like there's something different about you. Like you kind of remind me of unicorns. There's something off about you. Like I don't quite believe it. Uh, but lets them stay, lets the three of them stay. And then um, they find out that at the and in the basement of the castle is where the Red Bull is, which is where they have to get to to find these unicorns. But there's the song and dance about how to get there, some secret entrance through a clock and all this other nonsense. So, like they're trying to figure out this riddle to, to get to the basement. And this actually goes on for months, like months, like months. And yeah. it's kind of like, and during that time, she forgets who she is because she's a human and she's not meant to be human. And uh, and she forgets who she is. And she ends up falling in love with uh, Prince Lear, uh, who's the, the king's son. And it's like, it's like one of those movies where it's like, there's no reason for them to fall in love other than the fact that they should fall in love. <laughs> like, like there know, might be limited options. But like there's no conversation. Like, like, like the prince recognized, like, oh, she's a beautiful, like, like she's gorgeous, but like never like, you know what I mean? It's like uh, <laughs> I don't you I feel like most movies of that time, what kind of relationship do any of those kids? But like, <laughs> like, I think like even Sleeping Beauty, at least they kind of danced around in the forest a little bit, which I mean, like even that was kind of like a stretch, but at least they danced around. <laughs> but like, like, like here's like, there was like no, it was like other than, and, and the thing too is like, like he keeps saying like, oh, she's paying me no mind. She's paying me no mind. Like I, I wanted, I want to, I want to like impress her and stuff. And it's like, and all of a sudden she, they sing a song on the balcony together and, and fall in love. Um, so Anyways, after that happens, she finds out that they, they find a way to the, the basement and to find the Red Bull finally. Uh, so they they all go down. So uh, Molly, uh, Wizard Sh- Shimdick or whatever his name is, and uh, uh, the Prince Lear and uh, the Unicorn, uh, whose female name is uh, Amph- Amphabola, Amphabola? Well, some name, doesn't matter. Um, so <laughs> they're in the cave, and then the Red Bull appears and starts chasing them. <laughs> and then she falls. The unicorn falls, like like trips over a rock and like hurts her ankle and can't get back up. <laughs> so instead of picking her up or carrying her out or doing anything, 
the wizard's like, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll do the magic. And turns her into a unicorn again. And it's like, okay, first of all, the Red Bull's after unicorn. Second of all, she wasn't, she was just pick her up and keep running. Like, I didn't understand this point. It made no sense. Um, yes, but it didn't make any sense. So, uh, <laughs> So she gets turned back into uh, a, a, a unicorn and starts running. Um, and then the, 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 the Red Bull uh, corners her uh, with her back to the sea. And uh, we find out that in the seas where all the unicorns were driven, the Red Bull drove all, drove all the unicorns, uh, chased them all over the world and drove them into the sea. Um, so she's the last one, so the Red Bull's about to push her into the sea. And then she does what every other unicorn should have done, which is just like, maybe I shouldn't have my back to the sea and just kind of <laughs> runs around the bull and like, like gets away from the sea. We're like, what are you going to do now? Um, and then starts the, uh, uh, fighting the red, the red bull and, uh, and then uh, ends up pushing the red bull into the sea. Um, and then all of a sudden there's like this big tidal wave of, uh, of, uh, of all these unicorns riding the tidal wave, coming back to the sea. <laughs> and on the beach is like, like Molly, the Wizard Shim Dick and uh, and Prince Lear and all of a sudden these unicorns just start like trampling them like out of the way I got places to be I've been in the sea all day and like, seriously they're jumping over these people like like they're all bowing down like 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 ducking for dear life um, but you know what unicorns don't give an F so it's okay I was okay for that um, and then uh, the the prince wakes up uh, from the battle and uh, and is like uh, where's the love of my life and then uh, looks at the unicorn. Kamala, I am not joking. He looks at her like, I'm gonna stop that. <laughs> like, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, oh, the love of my life is a unicorn. It's kind of like, oh, she's a unicorn. <laughs> 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 there was some weirdness to this look. Mm -hmm. And I guess it was the 80s that anima animation made up it, but I got that vibe that this is more than, oh, my girlfriend is now a unicorn. This is more like, I don't know, my girlfriend's a unicorn. That could, you know what I mean? You know, you got those like, 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 like toxic straight guys who are like, oh, yeah. you're, you're a lesbian. That, uh, that means something to me. Like, that means nothing for you. Like, 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 you're, yeah. you're, you're done. <laughs> you're done. Accept your role. Like, you're done. So, uh, yes. Um, and then they run off. And then uh, uh, the, uh, the unicorn, because it's, because it's the wizard, uh, one last time and says, uh, um, like, like, you know, I get saying goodbye, like, like, oh, like, like now all the unicorns are safe. So, uh, like my job here is done. Um, and then, uh, he said, yeah, you're back with your people. You're just like, uh, you're back to being a unicorn. And then she ends it with saying like, oh, well, I'm not quite like the rest of the unicorns because I've known regret and no other unicorn has ever known regret. So I'm different than them because she's loved and lost sort of thing. Um, so, and then that's the end of the story. Uh, so, what did you think of the story? Um, I thought the ending is nice. I mean, obviously, <laughs> it seems like maybe there's some could have been some more development along the way. Um, I haven't, yeah, because I've I've seen this movie, but long ago. I haven't seen it in forever. Um, I really did enjoy it as a kid a lot. I, you're making me think, like, man, I should really rewatch re that. I need to check out where it is. Amazon Prime. I do have Amazon Prime, so I should check it out. And I do still remember the song. Like, that stays with you. That song forever. Yes. But it's funny, because you just mentioned right now about how it has famous actors. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I looked up, I'm like, oh. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I thought this was some, yeah, some low-budget, small movie that somehow our family got their hands on. Like, how did we find this movie? I don't even know. Like, it really does make you wonder, like, did our parents just, like, rent this at Blockbuster? How'd they figure out, like, this? Yeah, what's, yeah, how did we get this movie? I don't even know, but I know we used to watch it a lot as a kid, so... Yeah, it's like weird. Yeah, and we watched a lot as them, but I haven't, yeah, I must, the last time I saw it must have been at least like 15, 20 years ago. I haven't seen it. But um, no, you tell me a story. It makes me when I'm like, oh, I don't remember some of these points and stuff to it. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. I'm, and I've never seen it as an adult to really think like what the themes really are. I remember obviously the ending is really sad, that moment where it is like, she's different, she's felt regret and like that will forever mark her. But the rest of it, I haven't seen again to really know like, what are these themes? Are you about to tell me? Are you about to shatter my child? <laughs> no, no, okay. But, but okay, actually, so I, okay, this is my bad. So one of the, so at the beginning when she escapes from uh, Madame Fortuna's carnival, um, she releases a harpy, which is like this mythical bird, like a thing, like legendary creature. And the creature kills um, uh, Mama Fortuna. Um, and then, then there's a scene with like just her and, and the wizard and the wizard's like, oh, I, I, I regret doing what, what, what I, I, I did because, you know, like, like someone died sort of thing. And then uh, he looks at the unicorn and like, uh, don't you have any regrets? And then she's just like, I'm a unicorn. I don't have any regrets. She's like, I feel sorrow, but uh, it's not the same as regret. Isn't that the same as regret? Or do I just not know what regret is? And like, because I was just like, what is regret then? If, okay, if you're saying you feel sorry that the person died. Mm-hmm. I guess you, oh, I guess you maybe just don't blame yourself. Yeah, you I, think, I think it would be different. You could still feel sorry about it, but it's not like you actually regret. It's like you wish you could change the thing or go back and do something else. And I guess, I guess from my understanding, these unicorns, they just lived their life. They were never thinking of alternatives and what else they could have done and maybe yeah. just put in that position. So even I would say maybe even if she eventually learns like, that that initial thing she might eventually feel regret for but I think also if it's something so foreign to her maybe at the beginning it is kind of like I just feel I guess a little bit bad about it yeah I don't know yeah. so I so I watched this movie for, uh, for, for my birthday uh with, with Jeff and I was telling him how great this movie is and like right when we were about the play I was just like I wonder if I'm gonna regret like I wonder if this is like a terrible <laughs> movie but actually I didn't mind it okay Jeff Jeff said that he didn't he didn't, he didn't not like it, but he's, yeah. he, said, he said he wouldn't recommend it. He said, like, I'm not going to tell my friends and family to go watch this movie. He's like, <laughs> we watched it, we watched it, and, you know, it wasn't, yeah. like, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a terrible movie. Um, he didn't fall asleep or anything, so it was, it was all fine. But, uh, yeah, I, I do think that, uh, I, I think, I think, it, I think it held up. Um, but, yeah, it was okay. Um, but uh, one thing I will uh, play, and, and I'll, I'll edit this in post so it sounds yeah. better. I think uh, one of the things, though, too, that really made it stand out for us in our childhood is it was just, it was different. You know what I mean? It doesn't look like a Disney movie. It has, like... Oh, well, trivia for you. The studio that did that went on to be uh, the studio Ghibli that did a... Uh, Spirited Away and mm -hmm. like, like all those like best winning animation uh, studios. Oh, it's the same studio? It, it evolved into that, yeah. Oh, so that's the, I didn't that's know. the studio that started off with it. Uh, it makes sense looking at the artwork and even the style and yeah, it was, it was different from other movies and it was something I think that made it stand out a bit too as a kid. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, any other thoughts or opinions on this? Um... Well, I'd be interested to hear if you had anything else more to add, because I feel like I can more so build off of that. It's hard for me. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I do remember is even, I thought the the character, what was her name again? Molly? Yeah. I thought she was an interesting character too. I just remember, I'll never forget how sad she was when she met the unicorn at the beginning. And it was like, she wanted to meet her entire life. And here it's like, she was too old or something like that. Yeah, so... So that, yeah, that is the thing. She was like saying like, damn you, why are you coming to me now at my old age? Not when I was a fair maiden sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, like like legend has it that uh, unicorns would visit like maidens that were just like under the tree reading a book, like unicorns would come and like rest their, their head on their lap sort of thing. So like kind of like, it, it was like the mythology of, of unicorns. Uh... Um, so, and, and then yeah, like the, there's like stories of how like uh, people would trick maidens to sit under a tree and lure a unicorn out just so they could jump from behind and capture oh. the unicorn so a little history for you oh, thank um you. so my question is do you think unicorns are like size queens with like their horns like is it like oh my horn's bigger than yours so i'm like tough unicorn 
Or do all uh, unicorns just have the same unicorn horn? I, I don't think it's really a thing. I <laughs> well, if they were gay unicorns, there would be a thing. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And also, how does she not know she was the last unicorn? Because wouldn't you know that? She's like, hey, where's my buddy? Well, that's why I'm like, are unicorns like, I, I, what, how, are they supposed to be alone? Are they well, doing their own thing? Well, post after they're rescued, it showed the unicorns running off and like two of them were like sipping water by the pond, like like in a very mm-hmm. like friendly way. So um, I don't think they're completely solitary. But they did say that they are immortal. So I don't know if they, maybe they don't reproduce or, or need. Yeah, and maybe if you're immortal, like you can go without seeing each other for like 10 years and it doesn't mean anything to you because what's 10 years to an immortal? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't know. How was the prince character? I don't remember him. How was he? (laughs) He was boring. He was very Um, boring. Um, And also very useless. Uh, (laughs) Like, there's one scene where it's like, oh, you don't need magic. We need a hero. And he pulls out his sword and the bull just pushes him aside like no big deal. And it's like, is that your moment? And that's, that's where he got passed out on the beach because he tried to protect her and then like, it's like, he got pushed aside. And it's like, oh, um, yeah. Um, okay. So you know what? This is going to wrap up our conversation on The Last Unicorn. Uh, so if you didn't know, now you know The Last Unicorn. And uh, thanks for viewing. And uh, or listening on whatever device you're listening and uh like and subscribe um okay good okay we're done thanks Kamala I finished WandaVision finally so I haven't started uh Winter Soldier or whatever Uh, I haven't see I kind of I didn't realize it was gonna turn into a big thing like I was okay with watching WandaVision and I liked it like it was all right although it took a few episodes to pick up but then like afterwards I found Winter Soldier and I think they're doing another thing too isn't there like oh Loki Loki, yeah I'm just like I didn't want to commit to all this like I wanted one show like like, oh you know what you should watch uh Mythic Quest no it is so good no not You're ridiculous. Watch that. Not it is watch great. That. I liked that. Yeah. Oh. So I'm not going to say anything, Kamala. But if Rick was a unicorn, you just tell me when to stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> just say it. Yes. Oh my God, that would kill me. <laughs> it took me. So I'm like, where is he going with this? I'm like. I'm like, if you're ah, old- that's gonna, that's going in the promo. That's going in the promo. <laughs> Where does this get posted? On YouTube and SoundCloud. It's on all, on all your streaming platforms. Subscribe now. It's on Spotify. <laughs> on Spotify, yeah. Um, okay. Why have we never heard of this before? Because I don't need your views. I got, okay. plenty, I got plenty of views without you, honey. I'm not oh. desperate. I don't need to whore myself out with my family. So it's fine. And actually, it's good because my viewers have been asking why I don't really talk about my family or uh, people on it. So this is a good way to introduce them to you. So 